What's going on everybody, Digi Valentine here right about now, back once again with another little off the cuff story for you. Uh, I say little, but we always know that these off the cuff videos go for 20 minutes a piece sometimes man, they're never that short, so I don't know why I keep saying little. Anyway, I'm wasting time, fuck it. Yo, okay, so uh, it's officially the Final Fantasy VII season right now on my channel. Um, we are in the run up to Final Fantasy VII Remake's release, so I'm in the mood to do a bunch of little videos, I say little again, they're not going to be that little, surrounding the topics of Final Fantasy VII. In this particular video of Off The Cuff, um, we've got a, a collection of small little stories surrounding my history with Final Fantasy VII, and they all sort of interconnect into the punchline of, of, this, of this little tale. So we're going to get into that in a second. Before we do, uh, I want to send a massive shout out to Army, AJ and Chaz for supporting me on Patreon. Much respect to you both. And uh, if you also want to help me out, then please check out the links to my Patreon page in the video description. All support is greatly appreciated. Safe. And uh, I'm not going to waste too much time actually, we're just going to get right into it. Okay, so here we go, here we go then, here we go. Here are a small bunch of stories regarding my history with Final Fantasy VII. Uh, before we conclude it with the catastrophic event involving my little sister destroying my rare Cloud Strife figurine. It's gonna be a sad day in the slums, bruv. So before we get properly rolling, I'm gonna have to provide some context here, um, so you know where um, this is all taking place, at what time period, and who's involved, and so on and so forth. Okay, so taking it back. Back when I was a kid, my parents got divorced. I would live with my mum during the weekdays, and then on the weekends, I would be staying at my father's house. And uh, it's mostly at my father's house where these stories would take place. These The stories in this video, they're taking place at my father's house back in those days. And on those weekends, uh, my cousins would also come around to my father's house, and you know, we would all hang out. Um, then at one point, uh, my father got remarried and had a child with his new wife, and this child would be my sister, that's featuring later in this story. And bless her, by the way, bless her, like, she was only about two or three years old when this happened. Uh, so she probably, there's no way she'll remember this, no way. Um, but yeah, it's all love, man, it's all love. It's a story, it's, this is a story that I look back on now, and I laugh about it, which is why I'm telling it, because, it, you know, it's a comedic story for off the cuff. Um, so it's a good one. But anyways, yeah, okay, so. All context accounted for now, we've got the location, which is my father's house. Uh, we've got our cast of characters, which are me, my cousins, and my sister. And uh, we've got our hook, which is the game Final Fantasy VII. So, let's start with that then, let's start with that, okay? It was 1999 at this point in time, okay? My cousins introduced me to Final Fantasy VII. Um, back then, I didn't have a PlayStation, uh, but apparently, you know, they, they're telling me the game is good. Um, it, it was a reason enough to get a PlayStation in the first place. So, 1999, I'm horrendously late to the party, but I finally get a PlayStation and a copy of Final Fantasy VII. And obviously, like, I'm new to RPGs at this point, right? It's a, it's a genre that I've never really sort of dipped into that much. And uh, the thing about Final Fantasy VII, RPG format, you can name your characters, right? So anyway, we start Final Fantasy VII. First playthrough, first ever playthrough of Final Fantasy VII. We start Final Fantasy VII, and it's uh, it's already thrown me um, the name your characters screen for Cloud. Cloud Strife, the main you know protagonist. You're given the screen, the character naming screen, which is for me back at back in those days that was different because usually you only ever used to enter your name after you've completed the game, like on a high score table or something. But this game is asking me up front, yo, you're about to go on the adventure. You're about to start. Uh, what name do you want to use? So I'm kind of like, oh wow, yeah, okay, cool, I get to name my character right off the bat, this is wicked. And for some reason, back then, in my early teenage years, I had an obsession with the word Shadow. Nothing to do with, like, Shadow the Hedgehog or nothing like that. Shadow wasn't, Shadow the Hedgehog wasn't even invented at that point. I just had some crazy fascination with the word Shadow. So I was all about naming fan characters and stuff that I would draw, like, Shadow, yeah? So I was like, I'm gonna use that name here. Um, the problem, um, the thing about the way they had uh, laid out the the character naming screen in Final Fantasy VII is it has both the uppercase and lowercase letters all on the same screen. Like, there was no button to change between upper and lowercase. You had both of them. You had the top rows were the uppercase and the bottom rows were the lowercase. And for some strange reason, I'm, I'm putting the name Shadow in, yeah, but I'm not really paying attention to what I'm using. Like, I'm using a complete mixture 
of uppercase and lowercase letters to spell out the name Shadow, right? You know, you see, what's that meme with Spongebob? Where he's got the derpy ass face and all the characters, are, all the higher case and lower case. It looked like that. Anytime somebody referred to Cloud as Shadow, this name came up with all these letters, upper and lower case, and it looked bloody awful. And my cousin's there and he's, he's looking at me and he's like, Yo, why did you spell it like that? And I was like, oh, I didn't realise. <laughs> I didn't realise. And for ages, like all the characters, like Tifa's coming up to Cloud, yeah, obviously referred to him as Shadow. Tifa's going, hey, Shadow, with this horrible upper and lower case mixture and my cousin's reading it out yeah and every time the name shadow comes up he's going Sh -a 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 -a. And he, for, for weeks okay for about three to four weeks anytime i met up with the guy the guy's like hey Sh -a 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 -a. i'm just like fuck off bruv anyway so that's how that, that the very first um experience of playing final fantasy 7 naming my character i've already fucked it up with the upper lower case hybrid and then my cousin's taking the piss out of me for about three to four weeks with this sh doll shit. Um, but anyway, okay, so we're playing this, the first playthrough. The first playthrough is crucial, okay? Um, and we were playing for a long while, like I think it was like a, a, a Saturday night, like 6pm Saturday night, yeah? We played almost, I swear down, we played almost 12 hours straight non-stop. And um, I can't remember, <laughs> this is the thing, I can't remember what point in the story we got to. I think it might have been just when you're about to raid Shinra HQ. And uh, I think it was about that point. But anyway, so we'd just done like 12 hours, right? And um, purposefully, for the sake of this part of the story that I'm telling, I've left out a small little detail. And um, when it came to us concluding and wrapping up our play session for the night, my cousin goes to me, where's your memory card? <laughs> and this is the thing. Yeah, this is the thing. Okay, uh, this was the first time I'd owned a PlayStation. This was the first game I'd ever bought for a PlayStation. This was the first PlayStation game I had ever played, period. Because before that, I was playing Sega Saturn. And the thing about the Sega Saturn consoles is that they come with built-in memory. Like, it just saves to the machine. You play a game and it's automatically saving to the console, all right? I mean, I, I knew that PlayStations needed an external memory card, but... Uh, well, I was I was looking at Final Fantasy 7 and, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, it can't be that long. We could probably play it in like, you know, in one PlayStation. We don't need to save nothing. So my cousin goes, where's your memory card? And I go, oh, I didn't get one. I didn't think we'd need it. <laughs> and the guy looks at me like, listen, cousin, this is not like your average 10 hour game that you can complete in one run. OK, this this game's got three discs, bro. Look at it. It's got three fucking discs and you don't have a memory card. <laughs> And I'm like, ah. Uh. So now I'm thinking, oh shit, so are we going to lose all our progress now? And it's like, of course we are. Like, oh, you ain't got a memory card, what's it going to do? And then I'm thinking, hang on, here's an idea. What if, what if, okay, because, you know, it's early hours Sunday morning now. I'm obviously going to have to go back to my mom's house because I've got school on Monday morning. I'm thinking to myself, all right, what if I leave my PlayStation on at my dad's house, yeah, <laughs> for a whole week? And then by the time I come back the following Friday, hopefully I would have bought a memory card by that point, and then I can save my progress. And my, I, was, I said that to my cousin, I said, hey, let's just leave the PlayStation on all week. And he looked at me like, no, we're not doing that. Okay, firstly, uh, no. Secondly, are you stupid? So I was like, all right, well, yeah, terrible idea. Um, so we lot, that, that very first playthrough, including the upper lowercase spelling of Shadow, um, that was my first ever playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, um, which we never saved because I didn't have a memory card. Fast forward a few weeks now, okay? I've got a memory card now, okay? We're back on the weekends. We're making progress in the game. By this point, I am now a very, very, very big fan of Final Fantasy VII. A couple of weekends have gone by, maybe four or five weekends. I'm heavily into the game now at this point. I'm completely captivated. Like, it's consumed me. I love it so much. And um, like, I want to support it. Like, I want to hang this shit off my walls and stuff. Like, I want to fucking put posters up and everything. So I'm looking around at buying, you know, merchandise or something, yeah? Just to show that I love this game. I want to explore what else it has to offer. So I'm looking at merchandise. Thing is, back then, you like, you got to understand this is the year 1999, okay? And Final Fantasy VII was the first Final Fantasy game to release in the UK as well. This is also the first of its kind in our region of the world. Um, so merchandise wasn't exactly a major thing. Here's how you're gonna clock who the elders are watching this video. 
Used lot from the 1990s, okay? How many of you a lot used to buy video game magazines and look at the advertisement pages to find like those shops, the telephone catalogs. You'd call up to order something over the telephone. That's how I had to look for my merchandise back in 1999. Because I didn't have the internet in my house by that point. Yeah, I had no internet. I wouldn't have internet for another year or two. But yeah, I'm looking in the back of these gaming magazines now at telephone order catalogs and um, coming across merchandise back that was really difficult already. And now I'm trying to find merchandise for this crazy new IP that come out of Japan. Um, and I'm trying to find merch and I managed to find the original soundtrack. Um, I think it was by Digicube or something? Shit, it was a long time ago. I was like, oh, they got it, they got it. Right? And now I'm calling up this company and I'm praying to God that when we give the card details, they're not gonna scam us. It was a dangerous game back then. You think eBay and all that shit's kind of dangerous back then? Having to give your details down the phone? That is a fucking experience. But anyway, so I bought like the, the OST. I'm loving it. But I'm like, no, I need something else. Like, I want, I want, I want figures, man. Who doesn't want like figurines of their favorite video game characters, right? So I'm like, there's got, there's got to be something, surely. Um, and if you're from the UK, you'll know of a shop called Forbidden Planet. Like, everyone did, used to go there. I don't know if they still do nowadays, but back then, you're looking for something nerdy specific, you go Forbidden Planet. So, man, I went to Forbidden Planet. I'm like, yo, brethren, have you got, like, any Final Fantasy VII figurines or something? And the guy was like, oh, you're two years too late, my friend. We, we had that shit back in 1997 when the game came out. You're late. And I was like, we well, got nothing in stock. And he's like, nah, we didn't have that much in stock to begin with. And I was like, oh, for f all right. So I'm looking around now, back to the catalogs, I'm looking at- uh, Nobody's got nothing Final Fantasy VII related, aside from that OST. Nobody's got no figures, except for one specific shop in central London called Hamley's. And this ain't your run-of-the-mill, like, small toy shop, yeah? If you know London, you know Hamley's is like, the big, big store, like, the major toy shop. Big-ass toy shop, there's like, six, seven floors of just toys. But it's mostly um, traditional toys, like, you know, your Barbies and that. They wouldn't have any import stuff. Anyway, I called up Hamleys and I'm like, Hey, you're probably not going to have this, but have you got anything on Final Fantasy VII? And uh, the lady on the other end was like, actually, we do. We've got um, uh, a set of boxed figurines that contains the characters uh, Cloud, uh, Tifa, uh, Barrett, uh, Ares, Obviously, she's getting all the names mispronounced. Um, uh, Ch Chocobo and, and Frog. And I'm thinking to myself, Frog? Well, they made a fucking- they, they made the figurine out of the fucking frog! Are you sh- Okay, whatever. Throw the frog in there. Who cares? I'm like, wicked, yo, listen. I've been looking for this. Hold it for me. I'll come again. And she's like, we can't- we can't hold it for you, I'm afraid. We can't reserve it for you. And I'm just like, right, sod it. I'm going there now. So, man, I went down to Hamley's. And I'm looking around. Seven floors of toys. I'm all over this building. I can't find it on any of the shelves. I'm like, where the fuck is this thing, yeah? I'm walking past the tills on one of the floors, and I just sort of glance past the, the till operator, the cashier desk, whatever, whatever you want to call them. I just sort of look past them, and behind them, on the counter behind the tills, there's two boxes of Final Fantasy VII figurines, the, the, the box edition of all the characters together. There's only two boxes left. And I'm like, firstly, sick, I'm gonna go grab one right now, but secondly, what the fuck are they doing back there? Like, this company, like, Hamleys, the biggest toy shop in London, obviously had no idea how to sell this because it didn't fit in with anything else they were selling at the time. Yeah, you got Action Man, you got Barbie, you got remote control cars, you got racing sets, you got f sports shit and everything. Where the hell are they going to put these big-eyed characters with spiky hair? Nowhere. They, 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 they left it behind the fucking desk. So I walked up to her and was like, Hey, is that, is that Final Fantasy VII character boxed, you know, figures? And he's like, yeah. I'm just like, let me take one of them, please. So I bought it from him and I was like, oh, my days. I was so happy. Like, understand this. I was so happy. Um, they became my prized possession. I adored them. Um, but if I'm being honest, if I'm being really honest, they were very, very shit. <laughs> they were really, really badly made back then. Like, again, this is back in the day. Like We take for granted how amazing figurines can be now. But back in 1999, 
And bear in mind that I was late to the party by two years. So these are figurines from 1997. They were made of this like soft squishy plastic and like some of the, all of their joints were detachable. Like they were so cheaply made, they, the, the joints weren't secure. You could take them apart, no problem. It wasn't like one of those uh, figurines where you can interchange the arms and put different arms on. That wasn't the point of these ones. They just made it so cheaply that the arms would come off because there was no, there's nothing to sort of connect it to the body permanently. Again, different era, different quality, um, but they weren't, they weren't great, but I love them. Like, I genuinely love these figures, right? And uh, I thought the cloud figurine was the sickest shit I had ever seen in my life. I was so proud of it, right? I had I, I positioned Cloud on top of my PlayStation at my dad's house. Right, I had him in his iconic pose with the Buster Sword over his shoulder, and he's standing there, and he's just standing on the PlayStation like some beacon. <laughs> he's like some statue of importance. He looked fucking awesome on top of my PlayStation. Anytime I'd go to my dad's house, I'd see Cloud standing on top of my PlayStation, and he just looked so awesome. I was so proud of it, and that's where I left Cloud Strife. Okay, that's where I left him. One weekend, um. One Friday night, I arrive at my father's house and I walk into my bedroom. Uh, I'm putting my bag down as I walk into the room. And do you know when you, like, you know your own surroundings, you know your own room. You can tell when something is off, someone's moved something. Like, you can feel something is off in your room, okay? When, you, when you're so used to a specific environment, you can tell when something doesn't feel right, okay? So I walked into my bedroom at my dad's house, put my bag down, and just off the corner of my eye, like my peripheral vision, just off to the side, it felt like something was missing. And I couldn't figure out what it was, and I, I looked over to where the console was, and I noticed that Cloud wasn't there, he wasn't standing on top of my PlayStation. And I was like, yo, hey, where, where's, my, where's my figurine gone? <laughs> so I, I went to my dad, um, I, you know, I went into the other room, my dad's there in, in the lounge. And I go, obviously, you know, my family background is Turkish, so my dad is an old school, typical Turkish father, right? So I go to him, and I go, yo, Baba, was uh, I had this figure on my on my on my games console downstairs? It's not there. Where's it gone? And my dad was like, oh, your sister was playing with something the other day. I saw something in her hand. She was playing with something. While he started saying that, I'm just sort of looking past him slightly while he's talking, and I can see the shelf behind him and on that shelf i can just see cloud looking back at me his face yeah and my dad's still mumbling something i've just gone right past him and there's i'm like there's cloud okay but he's not he's not doing okay <laughs> it's cloud and he's a bit worse for wear okay his head it was just his head, his torso, and legs, and, and one hand, and one hand. It was Cloud's head, Cloud's torso, Cloud's legs, and one hand. Everything else was missing. <laughs> and look, like, okay, yeah, I was distraught. Yeah, I started crying, bruv. 14-year-old me crying over this fucking toy. And my dad, obviously, as I said, typical, he's like, what are you doing? What are you crying for? What are you crying for? What are you crying? I'm just like, no, Cloud, no, no. Right? My dad didn't understand how rare this item was. I, I knew for a fact that I would never, ever find this figurine again. Okay? And I just, I ran back to my bedroom, clouds in pieces. I'm like, no, Cloud, no, no, Cloud, no, God. And, um. I can still hear my dad in the other room. Shut up! <laughs> He's like, shut up! I'm gonna come in there and give you some reason to cry. I was, I was, I was, I was a mess. <laughs> there, there was no saving him by this point. Like because of the, the the loose parts and the joints, like you could just easily take them off. Yeah, and one like one of them was like these tiny little elbow joints. Yeah, they were so tiny that if they weren't there with the rest of the figurine, they were gone. Right. A few weekends later. Okay, this is a few weekends later now. I've accepted the fact that Cloud is dead. A few weekends later, okay, my cousin, he arrives at my dad's house and he tells me, Hey, the other weekend when I was leaving, I found this outside in the driveway. Okay, and it was, it was Cloud's other hand. <laughs> which means, which means, which means, wherever my sister took Cloud's corpse, 
It was national. It was nationwide. There was it wasn't just confined to the house. Okay, <laughs> my sister took this guy for a drive, and all of his other parts must have been spread all over North London. And I'm just like, yeah, great. <laughs> Thanks, cuz. Thank you. Um, now I feel even more hopeless. He's, he's fucked. He's Cloud Stripe is completely fucked. There is no saving this guy. But, uh, we now had both of his hands though, yeah? At least that's, that's, you know, we've got two hands. We haven't got the rest of his upper arms, we haven't got his swords or nothing, but we've got both of his hands. And in some desperate attempt to, uh, to save Cloud, yeah? In some desperate attempt to save him, um, we tried to force these hands into the arm sockets. <laughs> We we had to because they weren't supposed to connect to that part of the body, so they were of a different shape and size. But we forced these hands into Cloud Strife's arm sockets, and uh, yeah, he he, <laughs> he was fucked. There was no saving him. Like nothing we could do. Nothing we can do. He was gone. And um, in later years, in later years, once I got online properly and I I made an account at eBay, I was able to purchased the Cloud Strife model again, which was how I was able to recreate the, the photos for this video. Because, in truth, the original destroyed figurine, I still have it in my possession, but I don't know where it is. I think it's in storage somewhere. So I would have liked to have taken photographs of the actual figurine itself in its all the destroyed state, but I can't, I couldn't find it. So I had to remake, recreate the scene uh, with the newer, the newer copy of the model. Um, it's a shame actually because I remember like the, the messed up Cloud Strife figurine, the, the destroyed one, um, because it was mashed up, because he had these gumpy arms sticking out of his shoulders, um, I ended up painting him in the worst colours. Like I gave him white hair, I gave him a green jumper, and then I gave him red hands. And he, he looked like, you know what? He was fucked, yeah. I might as well put the nail in the coffin. Like, I completely ended that figurine. Like, my sister started the job. I made sure I finished him off. But anyways, yeah. Uh, this was a small bunch of funny little Final Fantasy VII related stories that I wanted to share with you. Resulting in the absolute massacre of a Cloud Strife figurine. Which broke my heart and made me cry like a bitch. Yo, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and uh, throw me a like if you did. And if you're new around these ends, then please subscribe as well. That would be nice. Uh, I want to send a massive thank you to my sister, uh, actually, to be honest with you. I want to send a massive shout out to her for destroying my figurine when we were kids. Um, it's all love. It's all jokes. We're just having a laugh here. You know, there's no, there's no animosity. Back then, I was a little heartbroken. But the fact that I'm looking back on it now and laughing means it became a really, really great story. One that I wanted to talk about. And uh, big, big shout outs to her. It's all love. It's all blessed. Uh, she wouldn't be watching this. I doubt she's watching this. But if you are watching this, um, thank you. <laughs> thank you for destroying my figurine. Uh, you've created a fantastic story for the people 20 years later down the line. And a big shout out to all of you lot that are backing me on Patreon right about now. Your support is hugely appreciated. Thank you, everybody. And uh, if you need to catch me outside of the YouTubes, then I'm over on Twitter and Instagram as well. So head there if you're down with those sorts of things too. And uh, yeah, man, I've been DJ Valentine. Thanks for your time. Take care. And I'll see you all again real soon.